two engineering services company, one called NRG Engineering, the other one called Edulis. And uh, one of them is still running. Uh, the other one was uh, bought by a, a European company. And then I started another uh, company called Akayo, which was an HR recruitment software, also in Singapore. And that was uh, sold to HR Boss in 2013. So I exited all three, which is considered um, successful. Any exit is a successful exit, uh, as long as it get, keeps you going to the next one. And I was able to reinvest some of the, the proceeds from these sales to fund my current company, Talkbush. Well, I move all the time. I mean, I'm, I've got an, we've got an office in the Philippines, one in India. Uh, I'm traveling almost every other week. And, and we have um, global market opportunities. So I, I really can't be thinking about comforts and staying at home and, uh, and, and these kinds of things because I, I have to put the company and, my, and our development first. So most likely I will be spending more time outside than inside of Hong Kong in the come next couple of years. But if it was up to me, I'd love to just chill and stay here. It's just that the opportunity is outside. As this, the founder, I've got, I can have a big impact on three areas, fundraising, recruitment, and sales. And the biggest sales tickets are definitely outside of Hong Kong. The biggest fundraising tickets are definitely outside of Hong Kong. And for recruitment, there's talent here, but there's also a lot of talent outside of Hong Kong. So uh, I have to get to the next gear, and that means you know, just basically being outside a lot. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time in, in California in particular this year. The, the ecosystem there, there's all the best product managers, all the best marketers, uh, all the most experienced VCs are there. So if you want to scale up, you want to be surrounded by people who've already taken companies from one to 100 million before and so you can learn from them. There's a lot of cross-fertilization between software companies that are supporting uh, different parts of the value chain. So we're in recruitment, but we can learn a lot from companies that do automated conversation in e-commerce, for example, or in advertising. So even if you're not working with your com uh, competitors, just being in the ecosystem where everybody's a startup around you, I think it, it increases your, your learning curve. So um, yeah, I just want to have that exposure. Now that we've got our MVP and we've got our, our business case uh, formed and we've got a, a client base, uh, I just, just think it's a good place to be. Well, it's, it's smaller than Singapore, um, where I was before, and um, in a way, you know, sometimes when it's small, it's better because you, you're able to, to shine a little bit more, it's a little bit less crowded, so I, I, felt, uh, I felt like I was very well uh, surrounded in the initial growth stage of the company with the government, the Cyberport program, then I went through the Blueprint Accelerator. I participated in a few pitches and competition. I got support from Cocoon, which is a VC. I received some, uh, some investment from, uh, from local investors and angels as well. I think there's plenty of angel uh, money around. There's a lot of bankers, a lot of rich people, and a lot of uh, rich families who are looking to diversify their portfolio into technology and new areas. So, you know, if you, if you know how to ta reach those, then it's a great place to, to get started. It's not a big market, you know. Hong Kong is a small market, which is neither east nor west. It's not China, it's not America, it's not really Asia, and like there's an emerging market. So. Um, it, it's a good place to experiment, but you have to move out very fast. Same in Singapore. You, know, you just have to, if, if you're going to focus, if it's a service which is very high value to um, high end sort of citizens, uh, so high earning income uh, citizens, then why not? But for us, that, that wasn't our focus. So the sooner we could get out, the better uh, in terms of client reach. In fact, the first client we signed was in the Philippines, so it was not in Hong Kong. And and so uh, for, for us, um, that wasn't really the point. 
but there was one thing that was good about Hong Kong is you've got this confluence of cultures. So you've got, um, if you look at just the way people behave on their mobile phones, they have WeChat, Facebook Messenger, Line Messenger, which is the Taiwanese, Japanese, Korean one, and WhatsApp. And all of them are very well represented in Hong Kong. And I think it's the only city in the world where you get all of these in high representation. So for us, we're building chatbots where they need to integrate with all these platforms. So it's cool to, uh, to be experimenting here. I, yeah, so I'd say, I'd say in this sense it's good, but it's also, um, it's a signal that this city is more cosmopolitan. So the things that you can pick up and you can learn uh, from different cultures, eventually that's going to help the city. You know, it's going to help create an ecosystem, interesting people. I think most startups here have a number of um, nationalities represented. We can take it for granted, but there are not that many places like Hong Kong that offer that. At the initial stages, when building the MVP and building an interesting product is more important than optimizing for cost, then Hong Kong uh, is, is a valid place to, to get started. I'm very lucky over the last two, three years, we had a number of co-working spaces pop up and. Uh, we, we were able to live, uh, I mean, it was I think it was reasonably priced. Um, most developers want to have startups moving into their buildings, so it, it worked out all right. You know, the big issue is who's paying your rent at home and who's paying the rent at home for your employees. So um, if you bring in interns, you know, who's going to pay for their rent in Hong Kong? If uh, then if you hire a local, are they going to be living with their parents? <laughs> Because um, initially, it's very it's very expensive to live in Hong Kong, so that's the big, the big uh, problem. But um, yeah, I think it's the same in Singapore. It's just like 15% better. Yeah, yeah, I, I hired some good people, but uh, also our head of engineering I hired here, and he's French. I'm French, um, and so you know I could have hired. Uh, it wasn't about uh, it wasn't about being in Hong Kong, not in Hong Kong. But I think there's French is there's like something like thirty five thousand French people in Hong Kong, and I don't know how many thousands of English and Germans and this and that. And you can tap onto that resource, then it's a very dynamic workforce potentially as well. Um, many many good engineers, whether. Uh, local or foreigners working in the banks. Some of them may be looking to change things up, get something a little bit more exciting in their career. A lot of housewives uh, or husband, uh, house husbands uh, probably looking to, to do something a little bit more exciting than, than going back to the corporate world. So if you can tap onto these, you know, to these uh, talent pools, then I think uh, Hong Kong can work in, in the initial stage. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, Hong Kong is uh, very efficient. I, some people complain that it's a little bit um, hard to open the bank account initially, but it's just a matter of getting through one interview with uh, one paper pusher. It's pretty fast. So yeah, very efficient. I mean, same as Singapore, <laughs> same as Delaware, I'm sure. Addressing this uh, comment to the young entrepreneurs who have, a, there's a lot of advice out there from professional advisors like accelerator programs, from incubation programs, from independent advisors, from online, from videos. Um, it can be, it can be a distraction towards building the business. And at the beginning, sometimes it felt that way because you have some very competent people who are giving you very powerful advice and they're a little bit more experienced than you. So you feel like you have to take everything they give you and you have to execute it. In reality, their advice is only, should, should only be background noise. The only real voice that matters should be the voice of your customer. And uh, there's so much in the startup ecosystem. Even in a city like Hong Kong, which is not the biggest ecosystem in the world by far, uh, far from it. But even in a place like here, you get a lot of advice from even when you don't ask for it. So um, I think it's important, first of all, to, to walk into these programs with a clear mind on 
where am I going and who's the important voice that I need to listen to because everybody will, will give you advice otherwise and you'll be pulled in many different directions and lose the leadership that you need to steer the ship in a single direction. So, just a word of caution. But then uh, I have to say, like, my development certainly was accelerated by it. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not the youngest entrepreneur out there. I started uh, Talk Bush, I was 37 or 36. I'd already started three companies before. And yet, I still learned a ton from the accelerator program and that I participated in. Even at my adv old advanced age and with my past entrepreneur experience, I still felt like it was absolutely worth it to take part in uh, initially Blueprint and then Seed Camp in London from the network that it gave me and the best practices in terms of fundraising, pitching and you know, things like pricing strategy marketing strategy, it's important to, to take what you can. So on one hand, be careful, too much advice out there. On the other hand, don't be too proud, be ready to you know, accept the, the lessons that are coming along. Um, and you know, I don't know, uh, that's, that's sort of a, you have to walk that line between the, the two risks.